select the width of the part and say I want that divided by 2 and that's the location of the work plane I'm going to sketch on. When I do that you can see it creates a sketch and a work plane right in the center of the part. Another way to do this, I'm going to actually get out of this sketch and delete this work feature. I'm going to delete these two things. Oops, let me delete that and delete the work feature. Another way to do this, which is my preferred method, is when you create a work plane, you can actually select the midpoints of lines. And I'm going to select the midpoint, midpoint, and midpoint. So there's no formulas. You just always are having that work plane lined up with the midpoint of those three uh, lines in the, in the part. Now with that created, I can create my sketch by selecting the work plane and using the heads-up display to launch the sketch command. I can press F7 on my keyboard to slice the graphics right down the middle. So if I click F7 again, it's toggling the slice along that plane. Here I'm going to go ahead and reorient the part. Whoops, wrong way. I'm going to reorient the part to the position where I, I can continue working on the uh, sketch. What I want to do is, since we've sliced this, I want to leverage these edges to control where this next feature is going to be created. I'm going to choose from the toolbar the flyout menu for project geometry and select project cut edges. And you can see this orange line now has been projected right along where this plane cuts through the part. And this is useful because now I can, if, if the part were to change size, this is reference geometry. So this is going to actually change size with the part and I can use that to drive this feature. So this feature is actually just a couple of rectangles. I'm going to hover over the midpoint and constrain to that midpoint and draw my first rectangle. And then I'm going to create a second rectangle here. Now what I've done is with rather than taking a line command and drawing you know this shape I've just done two rectangles that create a profile you know you imagine a hatch pattern through here you can see and you'll see it in a second the profile that I want to revolve. I will add a few dimensions here I'm going to set this distance to be two millimeters I'm going to set this dimension to be 4 millimeters. And I'm going to set the overall height to be 8 millimeters. So now I have most of my sketch dimensioned. But next I want to define the diameter of this revolved feature. To do that, I'm going to set this. Whoops, let me get out of the dimension command. I'm going to select this vertical edge here and on the toolbar set that to be a center line. And by doing that, I'm telling the system that I'm not just doing a radius dimension or not just dimensioning a standard line, but instead am creating a dimension or a full diameter dimension. And here I'm going to set this one to 41. I'm going to dimension the bottom of that groove to be 35. So now you can see we've created two diameter dimensions based on that center line. Our sketch is fully constrained because it's all the colors have changed to blue showing that it's fully constrained and dimensioned and we're ready to revolve this feature. So I'm going to finish this sketch and launch the revolve command. And When I do that the first thing it's going to ask for is the profile and as I mentioned before because these in, uh, profiles are intersecting I have the opportunity to either select the small square or the opposite. And so what I want to do is select that center point or select the axis. After I've selected the profile I can select the axis to revolve around. I'm going to select that center point or center line we created and I'm going to do a full revolve. And when I do that you can see we have our revolved feature added to the front of the part. Next we want to create a hole on the top of this part. Um, and then we're going to follow that up with a couple more to finish the part off. Uh, I'm going to select this. Oops, I'm going to select this top face and sketch on it. And I'm going to leverage the reference lines here to help me position a hole center. I'm going to create a line that starts at this midpoint and 
you can notice it's picking up parallel to this edge over here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, heads up display to set that to be six millimeters long and finish that line off. So now we've got a line that's always going to be locked to the center point that is six millimeters away from uh, the edge of this part. So I'm going to finish this sketch and go into the hole command. And here I'm going to again from sketch I'm going to select the center point at the end of that line. I'm going to create a hole that is tapped using the metric uh, standards and I'm going to make it a an M5 hole. So if I select 5 here it sets the de designation automatically for that thread and I'm going to give it a depth of 14 millimeters. And if we zoom in you can see that it actually has applied the threading to that hole uh, as a graphical representation that it is a threaded hole. Next we want to create some work features that we can use to terminate a hole coming in from this front face. So I will first quickly create an axis down the center of this hole and then I'm going to create a work plane through the center of that. I'm going to select the axis and then the front face and set it to zero angle offset so that it is perfectly parallel with that front face. And you can see it runs right down the middle of that part through that axis and we can use that in our next part feature. So I will start creating the next hole by creating a sketch on the front face. And here we want this from the center. We want it to be 12.5 millimeters off the, the center. And I'm going to finish that. So in the last hole we created, I finished the sketch. A little tip, you can actually use hotkeys on the keyboard. I'm going to hit the H key, which will actually automatically bring up the whole dialog box. And again, we're going to use from sketch and select a center. I'm just going to select the end point of this part. This hole we are going to set to 4 millimeters in diameter. And rather than give it a distance of 14 millimeters, we're going to select to terminate um, at a specific location or a specific face. So I'm going to select this work plane that we created as the termination location for this, which means if this hole were to move, um, the axis and work plane would move and this hole would extend no matter how f what the distance is. So we're building relationships as we go. If I hit OK, you can see that the hole is created. Now I'm done with these work planes so a nice way to quickly turn those off is on the view tab I can select under object visibility all work features which will quickly just disable all work features that are in the part or turn off their visibility in, in, in bulk. The last feature we needed to add on this part was the concentric circle that goes through the entire part and we can do that very simply with the whole dialog again. This time instead of uh, using from sketch we're going to use concentric which when you select will immediately select the plane so you just click on the plane that you want the hole located. And it doesn't matter where you pick because the next step is to define what you want it concentric to, uh, what you want to align its center with. So when we hover over this edge and you can select the edge or the face uh, it doesn't matter it's going to make it concentric to that location and it'll snap right to the center. Uh, here we're going to make it the termination to be through all and we want the diameter to be 14 millimeters. So when I create that hole you can see that we are back to creating that final part. And actually a little tip if you want to confirm that certain things um, have been created the way they were supposed to. If I sketch on this I'm going to select this work plane that was running through the middle and click the sketch button, I can actually hit F7 again on that sketch plane to confirm and get a good view of what these holes are doing inside the part. So this one is going through, these are connecting properly. Just a nice way to confirm that what you've built is w working the way you would have expected it. And then I will just undo that so that we return to the final part. That concludes this presentation. I hope it was useful for everyone. I look forward to presenting to you again in the future. Thanks.